Hey there, how's it going everybody? Now this is going to be a pretty quick video and in this video we're going to be going over how we create decorators that accept arguments. Now several people had requested this after I put out my decorators tutorial video and in that video I go over decorators in depth but one scenario that I didn't go over was creating a decorator that takes arguments. Now this is something that you'll see from time to time. So for example if I look at the hello world application for a flask website now, if you've never used Flask, then it's not a big deal. I just pulled down their Hello World application so that we could see an example of a decorator that takes arguments. Now, we can see here that their routes are defined using these app.route decorators. And the string gets passed in is the URL path. And there's an example here with the About page as well. This argument is the URL path to that decorator. So this is something that you'll see from time to time, and it's useful to know how to do this. So let's go ahead and see how it's done. Now I have a very simple decorator example pulled up here, which is very similar to the one from the decorator tutorial video that I've done before. Now just a quick recap of what's going on here. Uh, what we have is this display info function that takes two arguments, name and age, and it's being decorated with this decorator function. And up here with this decorator function, we can see that it takes an argument that is the original function. And then nested within our decorator function, we have this wrapper function. And that just takes any number of arguments or keyword arguments. Now within our wrapper function, we are executing some code before our original function executes. So in this case, we're just printing out a line that said executed before original function. And then we are executing our original function and saving it to this result variable. And then after that, we're executing some code after our original function. And in this case, it's just another line that says executed after the original function. And then within the wrapper, we are returning the result of that execution. And then lastly here, outside of our wrapper function, now we are returning that wrapper function waiting to be executed. So if any of that was overly confusing, then you might want to go back and watch that decorator tutorial just to get a refresher of what's going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code as it is now. So we can see down here, we ran display info twice with two different names and two different ages. Now, every time we ran display info, our decorators also added the functionality of printing out a line before and a line after uh, that wrapped function. Now this is something that we've seen before in the last video. So now let's go ahead and get our decorator function to accept arguments. So for this example, let's say that I wanted a customizable prefix to all of these print statements within the wrapper. Now this would be a good candidate for an argument to the decorator. The argument that we pass in will be that prefix. Now in order to do this, we're just going to add another outer layer to our decorator. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, function prefix decorator. And now I'm going to have this take an argument, and I'm going to call that argument prefix. And then I'm going to nest one more level deep and put that decorator function inside that prefix decorator. Now just a warning, this is going to get even harder to keep track of everything now that this is nested another level. But let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So now everything that's nested within here has access to this uh, prefix argument here. So let's just add this prefix to the beginning of both of our print statements like we wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and put that prefix in there and just put a comma there and it'll add the space in automatically. And now lastly, since this is nested one more level, now we have to do another return. So this time we're going to return our decorator function unexecuted. So I know that this multiple nest of functions can get really confusing really fast, but all we've done here is add one more layer to our existing decorator that accepts whatever arguments we want and then use those arguments somewhere within our decorator. So now when we decorate our functions, we use the outside function here that takes the argument. So I'm going to replace this decorator down here with prefix decorator. So now we can pass in our argument to this decorator. Um, so in this case, it's the prefix that we want added before our print statements here. So I'll just start off by saying testing uh, with a colon there. So now if I run that, then you can see 
that now we have that testing prefix before our uh, print statements in our wrapper function. And you can change this any time that you want. So now if I want that to say log instead, and then I rerun that, then you can see that now log is that prefix. Okay, so I think that about does it for this video. Now this probably isn't something that very many people will ever need to do, but when you do need it, it's nice to know. Um, and especially when you see it in code, like you know in the Flask examples and, and other frameworks, then it'll be something nice to know at least how it works. So hopefully after this video, it makes sense for how you'd go about doing something like that. But if anyone does have any questions about what we cover in the video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, then you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.